Hi and welcome to the first part of my Create 8 monthly feature. I will be creating 8 cards in total, featuring uh, products from the latest release by my favorite things. So first let's start with the Painted Flowers stamp set. This is a layering stamp set and on each and every one of these stamps there is a tiny little arrow at the top. I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see. And when you stamp that, you need to make sure that the arrow is at the top. This is going to help you align all the different layers of each flower when you keep that pointy thing at the top and it's also going to help you to cut out easily with the ties since there is a little mark I don't know if you can see there is a little dot there that you need to place on top as well so alignment is really easy with these stamps when I'm using a solid stamp for the first time, just like this one, I like to rub it with my finger just to prep it. This is going to help me stamp better and I won't have any splotches. Now, there are many different ways to prepare a stamp, but I find this is the quickest and uh, it works for me. So you see, I get a perfect impression. Now, I started by using three different shades of orange from lighter to darker, but you will see that I decided to change a little bit my palette for the card and I will not end up using this uh, flower. However, let's see the process. So here I'm going to stamp the second layer. Again, I'm preparing the stamp a little bit with my finger, ramping it. And just because these particular stamps have uh, that uh, artsy look and feel to them, you can't go wrong. So they are quite loose and uh, it doesn't really matter if you align them correctly. Now I'm going to switch to the darkest color. Again, rubbing it with my finger before I start. And now I'm going to stamp on top. And you see that I end up having three different layers of color. And you can see here what I have uh, stamped. I decided to go with the pinks, the greens and the yellow flowers. And um, I always like to do that. Uh, sometimes I just uh, switch color combinations until I'm happy with the outcome. I used the matching dies to cut out the flowers and the leaves. And now I'm just using my heat gun to make sure that that ink is totally dry because I want to do some embossing. Now, along with all the layers for the flowers, there are some little swirls that you can stamp at the center of your flowers. And just because I'm going for a very soft and airy look, I decided to stamp those uh, swirls at the center with Versa marking and then white emboss them. And using products from the latest release by my favorite things which was a great break for me from Christmas projects. I have been creating um, Christmas and winter cards for the last month. So I wanted to go away from that uh, bold color combination of uh, dark red and dark green, the glitter and the golds. And that's why I chose to go with this uh, very pale palette. And now I'm going to heat set the centers of all my flowers. And I love how my glass mat can take heat so I can easily just press it with uh, my tool there and heat set it on top of the table. Now I'm going to play around a little bit with my flowers, just trying to decide where everything is going to go. After deciding that I will add the flower composition at the center of my card, I'm going in with my blending tool and the same pink ink that I used for the flowers and I'm adding some pink at the background. I just want to keep it very soft and blend out nicely to white. And now it's time to assemble my flower composition. So for some of the flowers I used white glue or my tape runner there. And uh, for the little pink flower that is at the foreground I used a foam square to add a bit of dimension. I just love the clean and soft look of this card and it is very versatile so you can use it for pretty much any occasion. I am going for a birthday card just because I use them the most. So I'm going to use the All Smiles stamp set by my favorite things which is a stamp set from a known list release. I am going to use the die to cut out the word smile and then I'm going to stamp underneath that uh, die cut my sentiment that says it's your birthday. And to keep that soft look and feel of my card, I cut out the word smile with uh, white cardstock and uh, actually cut out the word twice so I can stack one on top of the other. Since I'm going for the white on white look, I want to have some dimension of the sentiment which is going to help them stand out against the white background. 
and it is uh, quite difficult to catch on camera, but it is really readable uh, in real life, although it is white on white. And I'm going to finish off my card by using my Jewel Drops. This is a product by Nuvo and it dries translucent, but it does have a tint of pink. And here is the finished card and some close-up photos. For my next card, I'm going to use the Honeycomb background. I'm using my ink cube of Versamark ink and I'm applying some ink not all over the place, just at the center and making sure that it's not it's quite random. So I'm going to place my watercolor paper on top, make sure that I press it nicely just because this is quite uh, textured. So now I can apply white embossing powder and heat set it with my heat gun. And hopefully you can see the pattern that I got. Now I'm going to bring in my watercolor spray and I'm going to spray a lot of water on top of my paper. Remember this is watercolor paper. And now to apply color I'm going to use my watercolors and these are my Gansai Tambi watercolors. And just because they are very saturated, they are very pigmented, I am adding a touch of yellow on my craft mat and then dilute it with water just because I want to keep everything uh, nice and soft. Also notice that I'm not coloring the whole thing, I just want to add some color at the center. And just because my watercolor paper is already full of water, it's going to spread out nicely. And I also added some splashes here and there. Now I'm going to move on to a slightly darker yellow. And uh, with my brush I'm going to touch the edges of those hexagons only on one side. This is going to give the illusion of dimension, but uh, I'm not going to do it for all those hexagons, just for a few here and there. Just because everything is nice and wet, this uh, touch of uh, darker color is going to spread out and blend nicely with the rest of the color. And here is a close-up look on how my background is looking. I used a stitched rectangle die to cut it down to size and now I will go ahead and start stamping the bees. These are going to be the focal point for my card. And I'm using black archival ink because I know that this is not going to smudge or smear when I will go later on to color all the bees with my watercolors and water. Now I'm going to stamp a bunch of um, bees there because I didn't know <laughs> exactly which ones I want to use. I finally end up using three of them. Now the stamp set that I'm using is uh, called Meant to Be and um, this is where I got uh, the bees and there are also trails so I'm going to place them on my background coming from different directions and just because I'm stamping on a watercolor paper that has texture I'm using my Tim Holtz stamping platform. I'm going to apply some black ink I got a great impression from the first time and then I'm going to switch one of those trails and uh, place it on another area so that I end up having three different trails coming at the center of my background just because I always like to have odd numbers of focal points on my cards. For the bees I did some basic coloring with uh, my watercolors there and then I used the matching dies to cut them out. I used a, a yellow cardstock to create my card base and that's a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to stick the panel on top of that and then I'm going to pop those bees on top of my background with adding a foam square at the back. And I have already stamped the sentiment at the bottom of my panel with black um, ink that says just because and now I'm going to finish off the wings of my bees just by adding some glitter on them and my card is finished. For this one I'm going to use the Friendly Forest stamp set. I am going to use each and every one of those animals just because they are so cute and I'm going for a masculine card. I want to create a card for a little guy for his birthday 
and I want to use all of these guys wishing him happy birthday. So I have picked some of my inks in a masculine uh, palette, mainly greens and different shades of blue, and I'm going to start stamping. Now I'm going to apply my ink on every one of those uh, creatures, and in case I don't have a good impression at the first time, I can always uh, go back and stamp again on top, just because I'm using my stamping platform. So I'm going to stamp every each and every one of them at once. The animals that I'm going to actually stamp are uh, seven, and I picked seven different ink cubes, so I don't have to repeat the same color twice. And after stamping everything, I'm going to use the matching dies to cut them out. I'm going to pass them through my Big Shot machine and I have everything ready to go. Since I want to keep my colors quite muted and uh, very masculine, I have uh, cut out a panel that is slightly smaller than a standard card with my stitched rectangle dies in craft. And then I have also used my slope heel uh, dies to cut out this uh, heel. Now I'm going to place all these guys on top of my card and I'm using tape adhesive at the back to stick them down. And it's just a matter of deciding where every little uh, creature is going to go. You can also place them one on top of the other. That could look uh, awesome as well. Now, as I was uh, trying to uh, assemble this card and I had all these uh, tiny little guys looking at me, I thought that it would uh, look so much fun if, instead of um, their eyes as they are, replace them with googly eyes. And uh, I had those tiny little uh, googly eyes on hand, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. First, I stack my panel on top of my card base, and that's a standard card base, and uh, it's made out of uh, dark green. So I'm going uh, now to add a dot of glue on each of those eyes and then I'm going to stick on top the tiny googly eyes that I have. By the way, the white pencil that I'm using to pick up all those tiny little googly eyes is a wax pencil. It is used for nail art and it's super inexpensive to find and uh, does the work perfectly. For my sentiment, I stamped uh, Happy Birthday to you and I have cut it out with uh, a speech bubble and I'm going to place it on top of my card as if uh, the whole gang is singing Happy Birthday to you. Now, just because this is a very dark cardstock on the inside, I'm going to stick this uh, white cardstock so I have a place to write my note. You can either do that or just write your uh, message with a white gel pen. And let's move on to the last card for today. Again, a flower card. This is the second uh, flower stamp set that has been released by my favorite things for December. It's called More Rustic Wildflowers. And again, it is a layering uh, stamp set. So there are a bunch of uh, different layers that you can stamp one on top of the other to create your flowers. Now, I am going with uh, pretty much the same palette as the first card that I shared today, just because I had all those ink cubes on my craft desk. So I have stamped a bunch of uh, yellow and uh, pink flowers. I have also stamped my leaves and now I'm using the matching dies so that I can run them through my big shot and cut them out. Now notice that for the branches I didn't stamp the berries. I just stamped the branch. I didn't know where those berries would fall on top of the branch so I decided to first cut them out. So I have now a layout on where to stamp them. And now I'm going to stamp uh, with pink on one um, branch and with yellow on the other. And the idea for this card is to create a wreath and uh, this is the way I create wreaths. I just cut out a white circle and I'm going to apply some uh, tape adhesive all around the outside edge. And now I can go all around with my cutouts and just place them covering up the edges. This way I make sure that my wreath is nice and round. And when you are creating wreaths, it's always nice to cut out more flowers and uh, leaves than you actually need. So you do have uh, a variety and you can play around and make your wreath the way you like. For my sentiment, I cut out the word kind out of grey cardstock just to keep everything nice and soft. 
Now I am going to stick the wreath on top of my card base. I am adding some white glue at the back, or you can uh, stick it with uh, foam squares if you want to add some dimension. And now I am going to finish it off by adding some white Nouveau drops at the center of my flowers. And that was the fourth card for today. Stay tuned for part B where I will be sharing four more cards using supplies from the latest release by my favorite things. And I also have a fun blog hoop tomorrow with lots of giveaways, so make sure to join. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.